Hello and welcome back to Football Scrutiny. Today we're going to be analysing the game between Manchester United and Liverpool. Okay, so the conclusion is that Manchester United adapted their system to a 5-2-1-2 system. This was done to mirror the Liverpool system of the 4-3-3 and prevent the fullbacks from getting forward. Klopp switched from the 4-3-3 to the 4-2-3-1 in the second half to free the fullbacks and to create two against one situations in the channels. Manchester United counter-attacked effectively during the game, scoring their goal from a counter-attack and having numerous other opportunities. And we're going to take a look at the changes of systems which Manchester United used in the game. The 5-2-1-2, the 5-3-2 and ultimately finishing with the 5-4-1 during the game. So let's get into it. Okay, so Liverpool started with their standard 4-3-3 system with Alisson coming back in goal after his lengthy injury layoff. Origi started on the left due to the absence of Mohamed Salah with an ankle injury. And this was the surprise for Manchester United. They started with a 5-2-1-2 system. I thought Liverpool would start with a system like this. 4-3-3 with the high fullbacks, and Manchester United would have had to try and deal with those high fullbacks. My thoughts were that Manchester United would suffer in the wide areas and they would struggle to pick up Firmino. And ultimately that Liverpool with these high fullbacks would always offer that space into the into the channels behind the fullbacks and be dangerous on the counter attacks. So I thought the Rashford and James would be key in this system, but what I didn't expect for them to do was, was to play the five at the back. Okay, so I'm gonna start by looking at Liverpool's attacks against Manchester United's mid block defence. So when we put the systems together Okay, so when we interlock the systems, we can see that Manchester United deliberately played a 5-2-1-2 so that they could then mark man-to-man -man each player from the Liverpool team. And why would they do that? Why would they play like this? And that was because they knew that Liverpool's high fullbacks would leave the space in behind them and into the channels either side of the centre-backs. So they played with the two quickest players, Rashford and James, trying to make the most of the space vacated by the fullbacks and forcing those fullbacks to stay back and not get forward in the attack. This worked until the second half when Liverpool changed system and were able to get their fullbacks high up the pitch and it took Manchester United a while to adapt. So let's get started by looking at the Manchester United press and Liverpool playing out from the back. So those are the systems and let's look at how they did it. Manchester United pressed high up the pitch, looking for one-on-one -on -one situations. When the ball's at the goalkeeper and it comes to one of the centre-backs, that is when the opposite side wing-back would then drop in towards uh, one of the centre-forwards, would just come into the middle of the pitch and leave the other centre-back free to try and leave the space on the opposite side of the pitch. Also have a four-against-three situation with, with the forwards from Liverpool. And when the ball went to the other side of the pitch, it was vice versa. The winger would jump out, one centre forward would go across, the other centre forwards would come into the middle, and the opposite side wing back would create the superiority four against three with the centre forwards. Okay, so let's take a look at one of those examples. Here the ball's at the goalkeeper, Rashford is in between Matip. And the goalkeeper, James, is going to jump out to Van Dijk and Pereira. Okay, so when the ball comes to Robertson, wan jumps out. James also comes out to him when they're preparing. If the ball comes back to Van Dijk to press, Rashford has come into the middle and Pereira is there next to Fabinho. In this picture now, we can see Matomine is coming in with Van Aldrum. So everyone is one against one with Rashford just in the middle of, of Matip and the goalkeeper. So if the ball comes to the keeper, he can press it. And if the ball comes across back to Matip, he can also try and intercept that as well. So it's just in the middle of everyone. And when the ball comes into this area here, we can see that there's six Manchester United players against two because they've limited the space and left the space on the, the right-hand side where the Liverpool fullback is free. And they would then shift the cross if the ball came across there. Okay, this is another example a few minutes later the ball comes into Van Dijk. James is going to jump onto him. Wan-Bissaka is going to jump out to Robinson. 
McTominay with Finn Aldrum, Fabinho with Pereira, Rashford on Matip, and then he would leave Alex Arnold on his own. Okay, so we can see now this is a little bit further along, and those players have jumped into those positions. And when the ball comes into the middle, Manchester United are able to, to intercept it. Okay, so here's the back four, what to talk about with the fullbacks from Liverpool being forced to play high up the pitch due to the system from Manchester United. When the ball's played forward, look at the distance Alex Arnold has to make up just to be able to come and support Mane. Okay, so the Liverpool press, as we already know that the systems are a mirror images of each other. Here we can see the three centre backs from Manchester United highlighted and the three forwards from Liverpool highlighted as well. And each forward from Liverpool is responsible for stopping those centre backs from playing out. When the ball is switched across, we can see Henderson is responsible for Fred and Mitomane with Van Aldrum. If the ball comes across, Mane will then try and prevent the ball being passed into Young force the ball back so then everyone can jump forward and press. So when that ball comes back, all of the Liverpool players are now jumping man to man against the Manchester United players, forcing them back into the goalkeeper. And this is the moment when the ball comes to the goalkeeper that Firmino jumps to try and prevent the keeper from playing and also in the line of pass from Maguire to prevent the ball coming out easily. When the ball does come into Rojo, Mane jumps onto him and it's really difficult for him to play out and they lose the ball. Ten minutes later, almost exactly the same, this time Mane and Firmino are on opposite sides but the idea is still exactly the same. Each player one against one with their opposite number and it's difficult for United to play out so they have to play long. And with three forwards there it's important that Van Dijk wins that ball to prevent a Manchester United counter-attack. As we already talked about, the Manchester United counter-attack with the ball over the top to Rashford and to James, trying to play two against two with the Liverpool centre-backs here. Ben Aldrin was just trying to switch the ball across. When the ball comes to Young, Rashford's going to try and make the most of that space. In behind Alex Arnold, who jumps onto Young, he's going to make that space into that channel and try and play one against one with Matip. So when the ball comes in, Young just hits it straight over the top and Rashford tries to take Matip on, which he does, and gets into the area. Here we can see those five Manchester United players under the pitch all lining up one against one with their opposite numbers. Here we can see it's difficult for Liverpool to play the passes into Henderson, Fabinho and Finaldrum because they're all being picked up. And when they lose the possession, Matomane plays a ball into Rashford and here we can highlight the two Liverpool centre-backs against the two Manchester United centre-forwards, the two Manchester United centre-forwards against the two Liverpool centre-backs and Rashford should have gone forward in this opportunity with the two against two situation, we actually went back. Another counter-attack, Henderson goes forward, Tomane recovers the ball and plays it into Pereira who then straight away plays the ball into Rashford. And we can see here clearly it's a two against two situation. Rashford cut inside. And here we can see that although the Liverpool players are getting back with Alex Arnold and Robertson, the two fullbacks, and the centre midfielder Fabinho, that pass in there, even though Liverpool players are all already back, that pass in there with James puts him one on one with the keeper. And a good opportunity for United in that counter attack. Second half, another counter-attack, Pereira puts the ball over to Rashford. It was a two-against-two situation, apart from Fabinho, who's got back early. Rashford cuts inside, and this is the moment where James just needed to be a little bit more intelligent and hold his position here to make the run in behind, because when Rashford carries it further forward, if James had just held his position, then he would have been in a situation where he could have just been slipped in and maybe wrap up the game and make it 2-0. Another opportunity to wrap up the game. Here they win the ball back. James straight away looking to get the ball in behind with a two against two with Van Dijk and Matip. And this is the moment where he just needed to play Rashford in behind the two Liverpool centre-backs. 
and that would have been a great opportunity for Rashford to wrap up the game again. But they didn't, and Rashford had to turn back and come towards his own goal. And of course, the, the goal of the first half where Manchester United recovered the ball, played it in, and here we can see, again, Van Dijk and Matip, two against two with James, and in this opportunity, he puts it across, and Rashford made a great little run behind Matip to finish. Okay, so after the tactical changes, Manchester United press and Liverpool playing out. How did they do it? So this is how they started the first half, one against one. But Liverpool changed. And here we can see Mane assisting between the lines. Henderson now is on the right. So it's a 4-2-3-1 with Firmino dropping back. Mane now playing on the left and Henderson on the right. I've highlighted Linderov and Rojo. They've almost got nothing to do. And Liverpool have got a five against three situation in the middle of the pitch there, which I've highlighted in blue. And on the sides, there's the opportunity for Robertson and Mane to be two against one with Juan Bissaka and Alex Arnold and Henderson to be two against one with Ashley Young. And we're just going to highlight some of these examples. So at the start of the second half, Manchester United is still playing with that 5-2-1-2 system. Liverpool, though, as I've highlighted, are playing the 4-2-3-1 with Mane, Firmino and Henderson all playing in that middle line. On this occasion, Vinaldum drops back to receive the ball, but the idea is still the same. So when the ball comes back to Van Dijk, James and Rashford are still jumping to press on those players. So when Rashford jumps onto Matip, a little ball into Fabinho, and Fred this time has to jump because Pereira's come out of position to follow Van Aldrum into the corner. So that bounce pass into the fullback from Fabinho leaves Alex Arnold and Henderson, who's just out of the picture, with a two against one in the channel. If you look at Ashley Young, he's a bit confused, he's not sure what to do. But Rocco is telling him to jump out. So this is where the confusion started with the change of system for Manchester United. Although the ball was crossed in, you can see here which Young why Young was worried, because Henderson is holding a wide position and he didn't want to be two against one with him and Alex Arnold. So here we can see how they lined up previously with the 5-2-1-2. And now that they're playing, and now that Liverpool are playing in a 4-2-3-1, we're going to see how Pereira would switch. The Tomine were coming to the middle, Pereira slightly to the right. So that now the question is that when the ball comes into Alex Arnold, like he did before we showed you, there are two options. Either Rashford can come back and prevent Arnold from coming forward, but if he's unable to do that, then it's Fred who should be responsible for coming out. That's one option. Let's have a look at it. So here I highlight Robertson out onto the left, because this is the, the aim of the 4-2-3-1, is to try and get the fullback higher up the pitch, and that's only possible because Mane and Firmino are now in the middle, and they've highlighted Linderov and Rojo. It's difficult for them to come into these positions, so now the Tomine and Fred are in numerical inferiority. Okay, so here's the example with Rashford when he's come back to prevent Alexander coming forward. When he can't do that, they've got problems. So here again, Linderov and Rojo, they don't have anything to do. There's no one there for them to pick up, so they're a little bit confused of how to play. And the ball comes out onto the right. In this situation is a three against one. Ashley Young doesn't know what to do, obviously, when there's a three against one situation. The ball could have just been shifted in there into Origi, in behind, cutting Fred and Young out of the play, but he crosses it in. And United were able to clear because they've got three against two in the area. So this is the other option. If Rashford can't make it, then Young should jump out to press and Rojo can pick up Henderson. That is, of course, if Fred can't make it. Okay, so if Young jumps out to Alex Arnold, Rojo can come across onto Henderson and the other defenders can just shift across. Okay, so here Alex Arnold picks the ball up. If Fred isn't going to jump out, then Ashley Young needs to, to jump out himself and Rojo can then be responsible for Henderson 
who is on the right hand side of the pitch. Of course, it's easier if Fred just jumps out himself. But these are the options, and unfortunately, at the time, no one was really understanding how to how to solve this problem. And actually, I'm completely confused. Okay, and all of this, like I said, to ensure that Robertson and Alexander can get forward into these attacking positions. So on this occasion, Robertson gets the ball from a switch of play and puts it in. And Henderson wasn't positioned as well as he could have been to try and make the most of it. And Yash the arm clears. And finally, the change to the 5-4-1, where Rashford was left up front on his own. James came into the left side of the midfield. And here, Robertson, another opportunity to cross the ball in. We can see James there getting back. And I've highlighted Lalana because he's going to get into the box. But the cross wasn't that great, so we couldn't go on the end of it. And then just a couple of minutes later, they still haven't learned the lesson. Lalana is inside where Henderson wasn't previously. Robertson is high up the pitch because of that change of system. And he's able to put the ball in and Liverpool make it 1-1. And in the final minute, Liverpool almost snatched the victory. Robertson high again. Alexander was high again to, due to that change of system. And with the ball being just chipped over, it was just slightly overhit, and that was a great opportunity for Liverpool to win the game. 